In the beginning, I was far more interested in the technical aspects of photography rather than the final image. This set me off on a rather unusual track for a beginner photographer. I was shooting a lot of film back then, and the only way I could really understand things and progress was to shoot images at night in my local streets. The lamppost would illuminate the scene every night the same way, so I could revisit the scene over and over whilst taking notes and dialing in my knowledge of how the technical choices would affect the final image. Not long into this process, I was gifted a book by my father, who also used to develop his own film, and is one of my greatest inspirations as far as photography is concerned. The book Night Photography by Andrew Sanderson is a practical manual which focused on film photography at night. Andrew Sanderson explained his thought process behind capturing images in an interview online. I'm captivated by light, form, people and places, and I love to discover the things in life that hold a kind of spirit which is almost impossible to explain. I believe that every single thing in the world has some sort of spirit or soul in varying degrees, and this is captured but simultaneously lessened when it is photographed. The things that have been photographed many times have had that spirit dissipated or removed. The grand vistas that have been photographed a million times often produce soulless images. Certainly for me, the things that are not photographed yet hold the greatest amount and are best photographed only once. This way of thinking of images really strikes a chord with me, as I tend to approach things a similar way, making an image, then moving on and not revisiting it. As I began to grow more familiar with many new techniques, I began to develop a body of work which to this day still echoes with the early technique driven practice I was accustomed to. As I began to develop as an artist, I started searching out new techniques to bring something different to my photographs. This brought me to light painting, which consumed a large part of my further practice. Lighting large landscapes and buildings, although with a more artistic mindset. Sculpting landscapes at night with hand torches rewarded me with a great understanding of how light could change the scene in regards to the mood and atmosphere being portrayed in the final image. Studying landscapes in the abstract form at night for optimum lighting, I began to find I was reducing large complex scenes into groups of simple shapes. This reminds me of a quote by Paul Cezanne. Everything in nature takes its form from the sphere, the cone and the cylinder. When reducing a scene into groupings of shapes, one can draw a lot of distinctions between that and the way great black and white photographers will work with large format cameras, such as Ansel Adams. He said, When I'm ready to make a photograph, I think I quite obviously see in my mind's eye something that is not literally there in the true meaning of the word. I'm interested in something which is built up from within rather than just extracted from without. Mr. Adams here, I believe, was really hitting the nail on the head when it comes to creation of a great image. Bringing an atmosphere and mood across trumps mere recording of a scene as is. Finding something existential from within and trying to put it across through a well-executed image is my aim. This brings me to my current practice. Moving into the more conceptual side of photography with darker undercurrents and tones, thick mood and atmosphere being at the forefront of every image I try to make. During the COVID pandemic lockdown, I decided to create a series of cinematic images that took a conceptual look at the effects of emotional well-being during that period. One of those shots, Smothered, was published in Frames magazine and the author Rob Wilson is quoted as saying this about it. Michael Mead's Smothered is a dark science fiction thriller. Michael Crichton's The Andromeda Strain and Stephen King's The Stand immediately spring to mind. This photograph is apocalyptic stuff. The potential for the end of the world is on the floor, wrapped in a plastic bag. The end of the world is nigh and is lit in an eerie green. There can be no doubt that this is a perfect image for the pandemic. This brings me up to where I am now, considering my future research project. What I want to do over the next year is to create narrative photographs similar to that of the greats. Hitchcock, Truman Capote, Jeff Wall, Edward Harper and Philip Locker de Corsha. I want to create my own worlds, writing a book as it were, but in photographic form, through select images of characters and scenes that emerge through the process of researching the sociology and psychology in still moments that exist as mere whispers in the air. Observing the banal in intrinsic detail, examining the suspense and drama 
that would not otherwise exist in passing moments. But due to the fact of the still image, we are able to sit and study once created. Gregory Crewson was quoted as saying that he likes to create worlds in stillness and in suspension. Gregory's photographs are much like Jeff Wall's work too, engaging with awkward scenes of great drama and suspense. Jeff Wall says, I guess you could say I'm like a film director, but my movies only have one frame. The cinematic image for me can be even better than a great movie, for it leaves so much to the imagination. The before and after do not exist, but in the mind of the observer. One can dream up so many scenarios that lead to the scene that is shown and a huge array of different endings too. That's why I get so excited about this sort of photography. A great cinematic image can spur a thousand movies in one's mind. Philip Locker de Corsia says it perfectly with this quote. Photography unites the obvious and the unconscious at a level of the liminal, the border between what we see and what we suspect. This is where I see my photographic practice situated. Each frame, a moment of time that has been frozen, yet still moves in the observer's mind. He goes on to say, Psychology is a reality for many people. I try to show this. It may not, in fact, be the actual psychology of the subject I portray, but it is played out in the image and the projection of that psychology into the surrounding space. Their image is the outward face in front belied by the inwardly gazing eyes. Maybe I should end with a quote from Edward Hopper, great artist, who had an amazing skill of painting these in-between moments of time that I'm really interested in. If you could say it in words, there would be no reason to paint. I think you could say the same thing about a well-produced cinematic photograph also. Thank you for watching.